had persuaded Sherlock Holmes to take a brief holiday with me. As we rumbled through the countryside, it was a comforting thought indeed that for a while anyway, there would be no desperate men at the door of our flat in Baker Street, no life and death cases to solve. Ahead were four whole days as suspended and happily uneventful as this train trip. We must be doing 30 miles an hour. Oh, we're doing more than that, I think, Watson. I thought you were asleep, Holmes. Well, not really. I was thinking about that uh, Parkinson axe murder. You know, that unfortunate business in South Africa. I, Holmes. I was wondering... Uh, what? You are on holiday. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Quite right, Watson. Quite right. Mr. Holmes? Yes, I'm Mr. Holmes. I thought I recognized your name on the reserve passenger list. Uh, thought you might be able to help us. We seem to have had a sort of an accident. An accident or an incident? Well, I suppose you could call it uh, an incident. But one of our passengers has disappeared. Disappeared? A boy. He was traveling with this young lady here. Paul is his name. Paul Winmaster. You must find him. I've heard you can do things like that, Mr. Holmes. Will you help me? There, there, there. I'm his governess. Well, I should never have taken my eyes off him for a minute. But I looked in on him after he went to bed and was fool enough to imagine that everything was all right. Do you think he might have been kidnapped? Oh, no, I'm sure Paul ran away. How will I ever be able to face his father? I think you'd better sit down, Miss... Um... Kendall. Lydia Kendall. Miss Kendall. And tell us everything from the beginning. I'm sure we can be of help. Sit down. Thank you. Tell me, Miss Kendall, what happened that made the boy run away? Mr. Holmes, have you ever heard of Paul's father, Lance Windmaster? Oh, yes. Ripsaw Windmaster, the Canadian Timber King. The papers call him that. As rough and strong a man as the trees he cuts down. Paul, not having a mother since the age of two, has grown to be like him in many ways. Independent, wild. Well, believe me, I've had a full-time job. I can imagine. Mr. Windmaster never disciplined him was actually proud of Paul's spirit. Until one day, rather suddenly, it struck him that he was bringing the boy up improperly. You asked me what caused the boy to run away. It was just that. And yesterday, when I went out to fetch Paul, I began to see the first signs of what was about to happen. to go. Yes, Miss Kendall. Hurry now, we can't miss the train. Now, when you arrive at the school, you'll take the boy directly to the headmaster. He's received a full letter of instructions from me, and... Oh, there you are, Paul. Your Uncle Cecil's just arrived to say goodbye to you. Here's wishing you success, Paul. Thank you, sir. You will be taught to be a gentleman. Something which, your mother forgive me, I failed to do. Yes, father. What have you got there? White mice. White? Now look here, Paul. You certainly don't intend to take them to school with you. Well, I can't leave them here. Nobody would look after them. Now that's foolish. Nobody really cares about white mice here, except me. Well, you can give them back to whoever gave you them. You mean Coco? Who? Coco the clown. I'm afraid I introduced him to Coco. The day I took him to the circus, they'd become rather good friends. Well, I couldn't give them back. He gave them to me as a gift. Paul, I don't care what you do with them, but you can take them with you, and that's final. All right. Leave them here, then. Good boy. Well, you and Miss Kendall had better be off. Well, what's the matter? I don't want to go to school. What? You didn't go to school. Why should I? Times were different when I was young. You don't know what you're saying. I have my horse and my white mice, and Coco and I are supposed to meet next week. You can't run wild all your life. You'll grow up to be a savage. But Lydia could teach me everything I need to know right here. 
Miss Kendall isn't a teacher. She's a governess. She knows as much as anyone. Now listen to me, Paul. One day you'll come into possession of everything I own. This estate, my lumber mills, everything. When that day comes, I want you to be equipped to take over. Well, I don't have to go to school for that. And I don't have to wear a tie and jacket either. You wear a tie and jacket and you like it. And you're starting the school right now. Put me down! I don't want to go to school! I'll run away! Put me down! He boarded the train without further protest. The truth is, his attitude seemed to have undergone quite a change. By the time we started out, he behaved almost as if he were looking forward to going to school. But of course, the whole thing was a ruse to put me off my guard. You said before you saw the boy after he went to bed. Now, what time was that? About eight. And what time did you find that he was missing? About an hour later. I heard a thud coming from his compartment and went to investigate. His door was locked from the inside, and I had to get the conductor here to open it for me. How he got out, I don't know, but he was gone. And, of course, you searched the whole train out there. Oh, every inch of it with the conductor here. I decided to stop the train when we couldn't find him. Oh, conductor, I believe there's a steep gradient just a few miles beyond Darcy. Uh, yes, there is. Now, how slowly would the train be going at that time, do you think? Oh, about five miles an hour. Very slowly, sir. Well, in that case, I suggest that we borrow a cart from a farmer in the vicinity of Darcy and go back and search that area. Yes, sir. I'll take care of it immediately, sir. What was the number of the boy's compartment? 37. Well, Dr. Watson and I will take a look at it. No, no, no. There's no need for you to come with us. I think you'd better stay here and rest. Now, you mustn't worry. Small boys make a habit of disappearing and reappearing. I hope so. I hope so. Well, you certainly simplified the search and narrowed down the area to Darcy. Here, Watson, give me a hand with this window, will you? Yes, sir. All the same, this train window. Yeah. Uh. Well, that was the thud Miss Kendall heard, the sound of the window being open before the boy jumped out. By Jove, you're right. The question is, who helped the boy open the window? Well, it took two of us to do it. Exactly. Good heavens, Holmes, do you mean that he must have had an accomplice? Of course he must have. Yes, but, but who on earth would want to help a little boy to run away? Well, when we know that, Watson, we will have the answer to the problem of the boy who didn't want to go to school. Now we return to the case of the night train riddle. Taking home suggestion, we borrowed a cart and traced the rail line back to the upgrade near Darcy. We combed the area several times without uncovering a single clue. All of us were soon discouraged and ready to abandon the search. All of us, that is, except Holmes. We've been over this stretch three times already, Holmes. Yes, I know, but this is the only place where the boy could have jumped off. But we haven't got a shred of evidence, not a sight of anything, nothing at all. Look, what is it? A boy's cap. Miss Kendall, would you mind coming over here for a moment? Is that the boy's cap? Oh, yes, yes, that's his. Then it has to be here. Look, over here. Here we are, Watson, the footprints of a small boy. Holmes, look, another set. Must be the boy's accomplice. Ah, good work, Watson. They end here. Then it's quite clear what happened. Not to me. Well, they obviously boarded another train, a local, I imagine, traveling in the same direction as we were. We do pull alongside a local here, Mr. Holmes, the up train from Royal Minster. Well, how do they do that? Change trains in midstream, so to speak. Well, obviously, Watson, if both trains were traveling slowly enough. They do. It's possible, entirely possible, Mr. Holmes. Uh, conductor, I think you'd better telegraph ahead and have them stop that train. Yes, sir. 
Do you think they'll find you, Mr. Holmes? Well, we are near enough to the truth, Miss Kendall, not to have to speculate anymore. We will soon know. We began a hasty return to the Night Express, aboard which we hoped to catch the local. Holmes insisted that time was of the utmost importance. to another boy. Perhaps the next compartment. Well, this is the last one, miss. But you held out so much hope, Mr. Holmes. How many stops did the train make before Darcy? Three, same as usual. Did you notice a boy get out of one of them? Not that I remember. There was a boy. I talked with him. He got off with his father at Manborough. Are you sure? Oh, yes, there was that pair. Blimey, oh, I clean forgot. What did the father look like? Mm, Medium-sized, grey hair, ordinary face. Wait. I noticed when I inspected his ticket, there was something about his fingertips. They were red. Red? Yeah. I thought it was strange at the time. Mm. That's most observant of you, Conductor. That proves it, Watson. Holmes, do you know who he is? Of course. Coco the Clown. Coco the Clown? He was the boy's friend. But more than that, there's the red fingertips. The significance of which completely escapes me. Rouge Watson, the same kind of clown uses. He was evidently in a great hurry to catch the train. He didn't have time to remove it all. Well, if you're only right, Mr. Holmes. And unless I miss my guess, we'll find them both in Manborough now. Watson. Miss Kennedy is sending a wire to the headmaster of the school, telling him they've been delayed. As soon as she's finished, we can be off. Hmm? What's the matter with you? You don't look like someone who wants to be taken to the circus. Holmes, do you realize it has taken me the last solid three weeks of pleading and cajoling to persuade you to take this trip? And now look where we end up, in, in... Manborough. And don't you underestimate it. We can have a very exciting holiday here. Oh, oh, holiday? We might as well have pitched a tent in Lestrade's office. I know, but we couldn't very well refuse to help them. No, we couldn't have refused to help them. Ah, but when we eventually find whoever it is who's at the bottom of this thing, please remember one thing. He's my pigeon. Don't upset yourself, Watson. As soon as we can find the boy, we can continue on our journey. Oh, oh, I'm glad you still considered that. Well, shall we be getting along? Hmm. Oh, by the way, Watson, mm -hmm. I didn't mention it to Miss Kennedy, but I believe there's some possibility the boy may be in danger. So I don't think we ought to lose too much time. Not a very convenient place to leave luggage. Holmes! You, you, you gotta wait a minute. We've left all our bags in the train. There's no time to worry about that now, Watson. Come along. But look, Holmes, we've got to give everything in them for our four days. All right, I'll find Miss Kendall and get a carriage and we'll meet you in the street. Now, hurry up. Right. Could you tell me if the Night Express has gone yet? He had to switch back to the main line. I wondered if it was still in the yard somewhere. I'm awfully sorry, sir. You must have the wrong town. No, I know where I am. I'm in Manborough. Right you are, sir. But the Night Express doesn't stop in Manborough. Never has. Except once. But confounded man, I know it stops here. Oh, no, sir. The only time the Night Express ever stopped in Manborough was in the summer of 88. A wheel fell off the locomotive. Right up front here it happened. It stopped all right that night. <coughs> now, look here, this is urgent. I happen to know the Night Express stops here because I got off the thing at this station. Now, will you kindly go and find out if it's still here? Well, well, I have to go down to the yard area in about five minutes. I'll ask the signal box at... Five minutes? Oh, never mind. Watson, come along. The carriage is waiting. But... <laughs> the luggage. <laughs> Open up. Did it 
it work. We jumped off, switched trains. Ta-da! Like a couple of acrobats. Where's the boy now? Exactly where I want him. Get it over with. I was waiting for a down payment. How much? A hundred pounds should do it. That's cheap enough to show you good faith. I'll expect the rest when I finish. Take this gun and fire it up into the air. Into the air? Yes, just to pin him down. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to find out who he is and why he's trying to keep us from the boy. Well, go on, Watson, fire it. I'm sorry, Holmes. This one's mine. What? Watson! Watson! Here! Fire it, Holmes! Fire it! Oh, very well. Kendall. Watson, you're a fool to take such a risk. No, with you covering me, I couldn't miss. Get up. It's Mr. Windmaster's brother. Oh, Uncle Cecil. Yes, and the first in line to inherit the Windmaster fortune, if anything had happened to the boy. That's right, he would be the heir. You may not think so at the moment, Mr. Windmaster, but you're very fortunate. If the boy had been killed, you would most certainly have been hanged. Hanged? Yes, hanged. Stop him. Stop who? Coco, he's about to kill the boy. Push him off the catwalk backstage. Here. One move to stop me and I'll kill this boy.
perfect timing, Watson. Yeah, it wasn't bad, even though I do say so myself. He wanted to kill me, and I thought he was a friend. Well, that should teach you a lesson, Paul. No one's a friend who encourages a boy to run away from school. Why, what would have become of Dr. Watson here if he hadn't gone to school? Well, it's very simple. He'd never have been able to accomplish that trick. But all he did was to... In dropping that counterweight, young man, I had to know the speed of falling objects, the theory of weight and counterweight, and of stress and resistance. Now, if I hadn't studied physics, there's no telling what might have happened to you. I never thought of that. No, of course not. Well, just you think of it from now on. Watson, did you really have all that in mind when you pulled that rope? Oh, I would believe it, of course. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you. And you. If you're looking for the time of the next London train, it will be along in ten minutes. Huh? Oh, no, no. I was just wondering uh, where our bags would be by this time. This train seems to be somewhat off schedule. Uh, I'd estimate that our clean shirts are about uh, 30 miles north of Edinburgh at this moment. Oh, confounded, Holmes. Why dwell on that? Oh, don't take it so hard, old chap. We'll give it another try one of these days. Well, sir, it certainly was a shock to me. Oh, it's you again. You were right, sir. The express did stop in Manborough tonight. Can't understand it. The first time since the summer of 88. Fact is, it was running wild through here tonight, they tell me. Came more and through on the local line first, and back through here to switch over to the main line again. Can't for the life of me figure what they were up to. Left a couple of bags on our platform. No hint of a reason, just found them there. A couple of bags, did you say? Oh, uh, why, 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 yes, sir. A suitcase like. Don't know anything about them. One marked J.W. and the other S.H. Suppose we'll have to keep them in the office for the 30 days required. My dear sir, if you'll just lead me to your office, I think I can relieve you of those suitcases within 30 seconds. My name is John Watson. Mine would be the one marked J.W. Oh, you mean, uh, I, I say, uh, and this here gentleman is uh, S.H.? Yes, 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 yes. This is my friend, uh, um, well, Samuel Higgins. Ah, well, in that case, sir, if you'll come along to the office and identify the contents, I'd be glad to get them off my hands. Samuel Higgins? Yes. Yeah. You see, we have three whole days left. And I'm quite sure that nobody will want to interfere with the holiday of Samuel Higgins. <laughs> <laughs>